Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Dell XPS 13 2015 edition laptop. It's a thin and light notebook, weighs about 2.6 pounds, and it uh, measures about 0.6 inches thick here at the thickest point. It's uh, got a nice build quality to it. It's got a uh, carbon fiber area here around the touchpad. The back has an aluminum case on it, and it has a starting price of $799, which isn't bad considering that's for a model with an Intel Core i3 Broadwell processor and a full HD 1920 by 1080 pixel display. Uh, this particular model that was loaned to me by Dell for uh, testing purposes has a starting price of $899, and it has a Core i5 Broadwell processor. Now, uh, as I mentioned, it's a portable notebook, and Dell's been putting out XPS 13 models for the last couple of years. This is the first to have such extraordinarily tiny bezels around the side of the screen, and Dell says that it led the company put a 13-inch screen into a laptop the size of a normal 11.6-inch notebook. I've heard other companies make that kind of claim in the past. Dell's really one of the first that I think pulled it off, and yet there's still room for a nice large touchpad down here, and um, backlit keyboard, and full uh, Windows operating system. Now the nice thing about the full HD screen here is you do have room to run multiple windows side by side. Um, you get all sorts of uh, extra applications from that kind of screen real estate, I think. So you could uh, fire up a video in one window, uh, surf the web in another, and so on. In fact, in terms of video, like I said, it does have a core i5 Broadwell processor on this particular model. So I'm just going to show you, uh, in terms of graphics performance, for instance, let's go ahead and play two HD videos at the same time. Now, with a lot of other laptops in this uh, 799 starting point in the portable notebook space, I think there's a prioritization of uh, sort of long battery life and low cost over performance. But in this case, you can see that we don't have any problems streaming two videos simultaneously. Um, I also did some uh, some things when I was testing this that I don't normally do. So instead of just playing some casual games or watching some videos, I went ahead and installed Batman's Arkham Asylum. Uh, it's a little bit of an older game at this point, but it's, uh, uh, I'm not really much of a gamer, and it's one that I happen to be able to install pretty easily. And, uh, and it plays Perfectly. It's uh, very smooth. The graphics look great. Uh, I'm not very good at the game, but uh, other than getting beat up a lot, it, it runs pretty well. So you can find some pictures of the performance of that at lilliputing.com, uh, along with uh, benchmark results and other things. Now, there are a couple of quirks to this guy. First, uh, because there's such a thin bezel, the webcam is located down here. And that works just fine if you're just sort of using it for some basic video chat, you know, do Skype or whatever, and say hello to people. But as you notice, as I'm starting to move my hands here, they're way closer to the camera than they would be if the camera were up here. And that can be a problem if you wanted to start typing while you were chatting, because now suddenly your hands can easily take up the entire screen. So uh, that's sort of a weird thing that happens here uh, when you've got the webcam all the way down at the bottom. Um, another thing that I find a little bit uh, disconcerting sometimes is that the screen resolution can actually be, uh, the screen actually looks pretty sharp, uh, almost too sharp in some situations when you've got 1920 by 1080 pixels on a Windows desktop environment. And so you can go into uh, to your Windows uh, screen resolution and you can click the option that says make texts. Uh, and other items bigger and smaller, and I find that 125% works pretty well for most applications. Uh, but there's certain things, like uh, with Chrome here, you can see that uh, everything looks fine, I think, on web pages. But the menu items up here, the sort of toolbar options, are a little bit smaller than I'm comfortable with. Um, likewise, with some other applications, you might wind up with some pretty tiny targets here for uh, for touching. So uh, it can take a little getting used to. It's uh, I'm not going to argue that having more pixels is a bad thing, but it can take a little getting used to um, how you use it. Now, Dell does offer a higher priced model that has a 3200 by 1800 pixel display, and in some ways that actually might be easier to deal with than the 1920 by 1080 pixel screen, because 
when you uh, sort of double all the pixels or, or change the everything to uh, say 200% um, at 3200 by 18, it's sort of like having a 1600 by 900 pixel display. That means that you don't have quite as much room to put multiple uh, windows side by side, but you do have uh, uh, things not looking quite as uh, super sharp. So that's a quick look at some of the features. Let's take a look at what we actually have on the device itself. There's a mini display port, a USB 3.0 port, a headset jack. On the other side, we've got SD card slot and another USB 3.0 port. And uh, that's about it. So if you wanted to be able to plug in other items, there is an optional accessory here. This sells for about $60 and it plugs into one of the USB ports and gives you an extra USB port so you don't lose that one. But it also allows you to use ethernet, HDMI, full-sized, and VGA. Dell says the laptop should get around 15 hours of battery life, which is just not true. Um, in my tests, I find I get around seven hours of runtime, which isn't bad, but it's not quite a full work day. So it's good to know that the power uh, adapter is not super bulky. It's not the smallest power brick that I've ever seen for a laptop, but it charges relatively quickly, uh, glows, there's a little uh, light here, glows lets you know when it's working, there's a little light here below the screen lets you know when it's plugged in. If you need more runtime when you're going to be away from uh, a wall jack, you can also opt for this $110 accessory, it's a 1200 milliamp hour battery that uh, you can plug right in and it treats it as if it were charging from the wall. There's also on this, uh, on this little guy which you charge using this adapter, so you just use your Dell uh, power adapter, charge this, and then you can charge your laptop from it. There's a couple of USB ports, so you can also charge your phone while you're at it. So you should get a couple extra hours of runtime by using this backup uh, sort of portable battery. Now, it's a 2.6 pound laptop that then you know gets a little bit heavier when you have to carry this big battery around with you, but it is nice to be able to, uh, to go a little longer if you're on an airplane or some other place where you might not be able to charge the battery. Uh, this model, the 799 model, uh, does have, or the 799 and 899 models, uh, do have matte displays, which means that you can sort of point them directly at the sunlight and things still look pretty good. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of sort of uh, shine here, but it's not uh, the same sort of thing that you would get with a glossy screen. The higher priced 3200 by 1800 pixel model has a glossy uh, touchscreen display and a starting price of $1299. So, uh, you know, there's a huge gap in, in the price difference between what you get with that higher resolution screen. And I think for a starting price at $799 with the backlit keyboard, the aluminum and uh, carbon fiber case, the uh, matte display, the high resolution display, and the Broadwell processor, I think that this is a pretty nice uh, machine for the price. Now, there are a couple of caveats uh, that you should keep in mind other than sort of that weird uh, placement of the uh, webcam. One is that the entry-level models have 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. You can open up the case uh, if you have a special screwdriver. It's not going to take a regular Phillips head screwdriver. You can open up the case, uh, pry everything open, and replace the solid-state drive if you wanted to on your own. Uh, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do, but you can do it. But the RAM is soldered to the motherboard, which means that if you want 8 gigs, you're going to want to pay for 8 gigs up front because there's no way to upgrade on your own. Another thing to notice is that down here we've got this uh, fan for, uh, for ventilation. It does get a little bit noisy at times. Uh, it's not the loudest fan that, you'd ever, that you've ever heard, but it's not a... Um, while Broadwell processors are relatively low power, it does use some juice, especially if you're doing things like gaming or watching videos or other things, and you might hear that blowing from time to time. So it's not a fanless, it's not a silent system like some other thin, light, portable notebooks. Uh, overall, though, I think it's a great value for $799 and up, and uh, it's, uh, it's probably one of the best laptops that I've tested in the portable uh, affordable range. Now, uh, there are cheaper laptops, there are thinner and lighter laptops, um, but this is probably the only 13-inch model that I've tested that takes up so little space and offers so much in terms of performance for the price point. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and a look at Dell's XPS 13 2015 edition laptop, which aside from the uh, uh, getting about half the battery life that Dell uh, promised, really does live up to most of the promise of what we, uh, what we heard when we first saw this laptop at the Consumer Electronics Show in January. It's available now from Dell.com uh, or from the Microsoft Store or from other retail locations. You can find more details, pictures, benchmark results, and more at Lilliputing.com.